So swelling. Swelling is basically the response of tissue, whether it's your muscles, your tendons, your ligaments, joints, um, organs, etc. It's basically just the response of tissue to three major things. One can be that it's injury. There was some injury to that area. Two is that there's just some irritation, whether it's um, whether it's uh, something that's that's bloated or irritated. And, and three is that there's just abnormal stress to it, right? So what does that mean? Well, you're going to get swelling for three reasons. One is if you injured something. So the most basic example of that is you stepped off a curb, you twisted your ankle. You're going to get some swelling related to that. The second would be irritation. Well, irritation to a muscle, let's say you're out in the garden, you're pulling a lot of weeds, your back muscles, your leg muscles, they're irritated, they're, they have the potential to be swollen. And the third definition or the third type of swelling would really come from something that is the result of some abnormal stress. Now, it could be some abnormal stress on an organ like your liver or your kidney coming from a lot of different things there. But in the case of muscles and bones and ligaments and things that we're talking about this in context of, abnormal stress would be I painted the, a room at my house. And so my shoulder, my elbow, my arm, they're all going to be sore and that soreness and stuff is coming from swelling. So here's a good question for you. True or false? Is all swelling observable? Well, I think the natural inkling on that answer is that it's true because we think of swelling as being I twisted my ankle or I've got this puffiness in my elbow, etc., and I can only see swelling. Well, the answer to the question is actually that it's false. Most times you have swelling, you actually cannot see it. So yes, you can see it on that ankle or that finger that got you know, jammed or whatever, you can see that swelling. But most of the time when there's swelling, you're not actually seeing it. It's swelling that's occurring inside of the tissue itself. Well, what is swelling then? It's really a collection of fluid that collects in a specific area. So for starters, you have fluid that's traveling all throughout your body. That fluid is good fluid. Think of it as being water. It's carrying some nutrients. It's carrying some, some minor, um, almost like your first aid kit that you would pull out right away when, when you cut something or when you injure something. It's that immediate first aid system of your body. The fluid that's traveling around would be water. It's in your blood. It's circulating all throughout. When you have an injury or an irritation or there's abnormal stress in an area, what the body does is it floods a good portion of that fluid to that area. So it takes it out of the bloodstream and it loads it into the muscle, the joint, the tissue, whatever it is that's, that's irritated, that's injured, that's, um, that's been overworked. And that fluid or that, that fluid collection there is really what we call, what we call swelling. And that swelling is it collects in that area and it's the body's natural response to trying to help with injury or irritation, etc. So it's bringing in some things that are needed to get that emergency um, injury process handled, right? It's bringing in some nutrients to kind of lock up the area and help it to be tighter. It's, it's thickening up the tissue to protect it from, from further injury so an ankle sprain doesn't become a broken bone or it doesn't become a tear of a tissue, etc. So it's thickening up that tissue. And then it's beginning to bring a couple of nutrients to the area on a quick dose, almost like a, almost like a, a clotting mechanism, to get that area to start its healing process. So that is really what we would term to be good swelling. So anytime there is overuse or irritation or an injury, we would expect to see whether it's outward signs or inward signs of inflammation. The signs of inflammation and swelling would be that there's pain and soreness in that area, that there's stiffness in that area, that, that you may actually even see a little bit of that swelling. Those are all some good things and they're, they're appropriate with swelling because again, you're trying to lock that area up, make it a little bit stiffer so that you don't continue to use it or overuse it and, tear things or, or create big problems. But the problem is where swelling comes in and becomes a problem is that it stays there. So basically the general rule of thumb is that swelling should be there, again, whether it's visible or not, swelling should be there for about 12 to 24 hours after there was an injury or an irritation to tissue or, or basically just an overuse or an ab abnormal stress on that tissue. And so when that swelling comes in and it stays for more than about 12 to 24 hours, that's when it really begins to be a problem because now it's not that emergency first aid kit anymore. Your body needs a lot more to happen at that point. It needs blood flow to the area. It needs the area to be looser. It needs the area to regain strength. And the problem with swelling is that if it doesn't go away after that 12 to 24 hour period, your pain will stay and may actually get worse. Your joint stiffness or muscle stiffness and soreness will stay and may actually get worse. And worst of all, the problem is that it's restricting blood flow to that area, which is what really is going to bring the real nutrients that your body needs to heal, the oxygen that it needs, 
and the ability to make sure that not only does it heal this time, but it heals completely so that it reduces the likelihood that this problem is going to occur again. So we kind of get into two different types of inflammation. Then we get into acute inflammation and chronic inflammation. So acute inflammation would be, um, again, you're stepping off a curb, you twist your ankle. You might get a little bit of puffiness, a little bit of swelling in your ankle, and, and it's there for right away, and it's there kind of through tomorrow. But then the day after that, it's gone. What your body was able to do was switch over from, it did what it was supposed to do, it brought that fluid in. The fluid came in to make that ankle a little bit tighter, to start to bring in some of the immediate nutrients that it needed to heal, to kind of tell you that something was wrong, create a little bit of pain for you, so that you walked a little bit more gingerly the next day or so. But by 24 hours later, that, that swelling should be gone. And as a result, the pain should be gone, the stiffness should be gone, you should be able to walk normally, etc. When that doesn't happen, that's what we would term to be chronic inflammation. So chronic inflammation is something that either lasts for more than 24 hours or comes and goes over the course of time. And chronic inflammation is not a good thing. It's a sign that your body isn't doing what it needs to do to heal the area. Your body got stuck in this inflammation state or this swelling state. And so that chronic swelling collects in that joint. So sticking with the example of the ankle, it stays in that joint. It keeps the joint tight. It keeps there being pain and soreness there. It makes it difficult for you to walk normally. And worst of all, it's restricting the blood flow to the area, which is helping, or which would help the other tissues in that area, ligaments, bone, etc., to begin their healing process. So let's look at a couple of two examples of some swelling events, right? The first would be just for example, you go for a long walk, you go for a run, you're doing some gardening in the yard, you paint the, the room, whatever it might be. The muscles, the joints that were under that stress, there might have been a little bit of overuse to them, you hadn't been out in the garden lately, it was more than you'd run normally, or there was some small injury to it, etc. And you'll get some swelling. Now again, this is where you're not going to see any actual inflammation. But the, the muscles in your arms from painting that room, they'll be swollen. Again, what the swelling means is that the, the fluid was directed to that area to begin that healing process. That will cause some stiffness, It'll be a little bit harder to straighten your arm out. It'll be pretty sore, it might even be a little bit painful. Fine. That should last for no more than 12 to 24 hours. Over that 12 to 24 hours, your body should be able to make the switch on its own to using your bloodstream, your blood system, to continue the healing process. It increases blood flow. Get an increase in blood flow brings more oxygen. More oxygen decreases the swelling and the pressure that it's putting on the nerves. It picks up that fluid and it redistributes it back throughout the rest of the body. And with that, your pain should be coming down because the swelling is no longer pressing on the nerves. The second thing that should be happening then is with the increase in blood flow, the stiffness goes away. You can straighten that arm out better. Your back isn't as sore. You can start to move more easily, etc. And that's all coming from the fact that you had this swelling that kind of was there. The body switched over, got the increased blood flow, things start to loosen up, and everything is moving better. Now the issue or the problem comes in if that doesn't happen. And most of the time, even though our bodies on the outside look like great working machines, on the inside they're not really well functioning machines. And what happens is that swelling, that soreness, that stiffness, etc., it stays there for more than 12 to 24 hours. It doesn't necessarily get worse, but it definitely doesn't get better. And so that's a sign that the swelling is still there. It's still causing the pressure on the nerves, which ultimately is what's causing the pain. It's still causing the the tissue to be tight and thicker, which is what's causing the stiffness, the difficulty with movement, etc. And that's the, the problem with swelling, and that's really where some expert help really comes into play. Another example of, of swollen tissue would be that you are that you you've got this swelling or this this joint stiffness and soreness that comes and goes. You might think of it as arthritis, you might think of it as I just have a bad knee or my hip gets stiff when it's cold or my back is tight if I sit too long, etc. Those are all examples of swelling that comes and goes. So that's what we would term to be chronic. It's there and then for 12 or 24 hours and then it's gone for two or three days or two or three weeks or two or three months and then it's back again. What that's a sign of is that that swelling never really left the area completely. The body never got a chance to switch over to its continued or complete healing process and so this problem keeps festering and keeps being there because the tissue is still a bit tight it's not getting great blood flow to it so it's not getting good oxygen and, and other cell delivery to it to help it to fully heal and it's making it susceptible to this recurring problem of stiffness soreness tightness difficulty doing things etc and that all stems back to the inflammation that never really fully went away from that area 
So when am I supposed to be worried about swelling? Well, there's really three times where you need to really be very concerned about swelling. The first would be if you can actually visibly see swelling, that is swelling that is not going to go away inside of that 12 to 24 hour period. So again, a great example is I stepped off the curb, I twisted my ankle, or I, I slipped and fell and I landed on my hand and my wrist is swollen. Everything appears to be in place, but I've got some actual swelling there. That's a sign that something's wrong in either of those cases. If, you're, if your knee joint is puffy and swollen, that's a sign that something's wrong. You need to be concerned about that. That swelling to that degree in any of those cases is not normal and it isn't going to go away on its own. And that's going and prevent the tissue from completely healing itself. The second time when you need to be worried about um, or concerned about any kind of swelling is if in the course of the 12 to 24 hours after the swelling is, is noticeable, or after the soreness starts, if your pain, your stiffness, your swelling, any of those things is increasing in the 12 to 24 hours after it first started, that's a sign that the swelling, even though again you can't see it, the swelling is actually increasing. It's, it's becoming more, there's more fluid being delivered to that area. That's the cause for the increased swelling, the, in, or the increased soreness, the increased pain, the increased stiffness. And again, that's a time when you really want to get that looked at and get that taken care of. And then the third time that you want to be concerned about is any time that that soreness lasts or that stiffness lasts for more than that 12 to 24 hour period. Remember, acute inflammation gone within 24 hours. Chronic inflammation, which is what we're really concerned about, chronic swelling, is still there 24 hours later. So if it's still there, either two weeks later, two days later, the next day, two months later, whatever it is, if that soreness and that stiffness is still there to some degree, that swelling hasn't gone away. And the concern with swelling is that when it does not go away, the body hasn't healed itself. The body isn't able to start that next phase and heal itself completely, which puts you at risk for injury in the future. And that's a big thing that you want to prevent. Then you're talking about some actual potential for fractures or tears of ligaments, tendons, etc. So what do you need to do if you've had swelling that, that you can actually see, or if you've had pain, stiffness, soreness that didn't go away in, after a 24 hour period, or that it's getting worse inside of that 12 or 24 hour period? Well, what you really need to do is really need to get a, a good evaluation, a good assessment of what's happening in that area. And that's really where an expert physical therapist comes in here at Loudoun Sports Therapy Center. We'll be able to sit down with you for, for a, a period of time, figure out exactly when your problem started, figure out exactly what the causes of that swelling are because ultimately you're thinking I have pain. Well pain is coming from swelling. Swelling that's in an area that's putting pressure on the tissue is going to cause that, that pain to still be there. And unless the swelling is addressed, the pain is going to become repetitive and it's going to be the result of that chronic swelling problem. So again, if you're having any of those things, that's really where an expert physical therapist at Loudon Sports Therapy comes in. Let us sit down with you, let us do, spend a good hour with you and figure out and do an evaluation and figure out what is causing the, the symptoms that you're having. How is the swelling responding? What is, what's the cause of the swelling itself? And what needs to be done to get that under control? Because once we do that, then we can really help to give you a good plan of action on how to not only get rid of the swelling, again, whether it's visible or not, but to decrease your pain, get things under control, and get you back to being able to live life and do the things that you want to do. So click on the link below or give us a call at the number below, and let's get you set up and get you started to really get things feeling better, but get that swelling under control so that we can get you to a point where things are healed completely, the body's back in its normal shape, and everything's good to go and you're feeling great. Thanks.